Hey guys, it's Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on Introduction to Genetic Crosses. Now before we go any further, well, let's review what genetics is. Genetics is the study of how traits, and traits are those things that we look like and behave like. So genetics is the study of how traits are passed from parents to offspring. Offspring generally show traits that are similar uh, to each parent, and traits are passed from parents to offspring by using these things called sex cells. We learned about those a few units ago. Let's go ahead and review them. Uh, first off, let's take a diff the look at the difference between a body cell and a sex cell. First off, a body cell is, in a human being, has 46 total chromosomes. And we get 23 pairs of chromosomes, so we actually have like two copies of each chromosome. And that makes up most of your body and most of your tissues. A sex cell is a little bit different. It actually only has 23 total chromosomes, so we only actually have one copy of each. And an example of a, sper of a sex cell would be sperm or egg. So when the sperm and egg unite, it's, it, we make a whole new human being. Here I have what's called a karyotype. Uh, in a regular old body cell, you could count them up, and you have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So you have 46 total. And take a look over here. The, th the 23rd pair, uh, you can actually see that this one here looks a little bit weird, a little bit different than the other one. Uh, that is what we commonly refer to as being the Y chromosome. And uh, now if you remember back, men are XY, women are XX. So if this was a human being, this person's karyotype would be uh, for a male. And uh, now if you had two copies of this X right here, that would mean that you'd be a female. Now, in a sex cell, it's a little bit different. If you count them up here, they have half the number. Let me talk a second for about, uh, about genes here. Um, a gene is a small section of a chromosome that determines a specific trait. So, for example, I have brown hair, I have brown eyes, I'm pretty loud, I'm a pretty energetic guy. Um, all of those things are traits of mine that are controlled by genes. Over here is a picture of a chromosome. And if you take a look, it has all these little bands on it. All those little bands are for a specific gene. And if you actually take a look, this gene right here is a little bit thicker than that gene. That's because some genes in our body actually um, are, uh, have more information than other genes. So they have more DNA, thus their bigger gene. Now in each body cell, we have two copies of every gene, one on each one of these chromosomes. Here's chromosome 1, here's chromosome 2. And at this point, we actually call those alleles. So alleles are, is another name for having uh, different types of genes in your body. And those genes ultimately will control one type of trait. So for example, I have brown eye color. So I have two genes, or alleles, that control my eye color. I got one from each parent. Now, how did that all work? Well, it happened because of a process called fertilization. Let's review that. We get one set of genes from each one of our parents. So let's say that this is mom and this is her egg cell. Um, we have two chromosomes in there. One is bigger than the other. And here's dad and his sperm cell. And he has his two chromosomes. One, again, is bigger than the other. When the sperm and the egg meet each other in the womb, those uh, chromosomes come together. And so now, if this is chromosome one, this is chromosome one, now we have two copies of chromosome 1. And if this is chromosome 2 here, and this is chromosome 2 here, now we have two copies of chromosome 2. And that was the process that created all of us. Uh, you may recall that we have sometimes dominant alleles. This is a little bit weird, but sometimes some genes have the ability to mask the other one. So again, if we have two copies, sometimes one won't show up if the other one is going to dominate over the other one. It's like literally putting a cap on it and silencing it. So for example, if we have a tall if we have a tall plant here, what we do is say that one has a big letter T. So what do you think if it's short? Well, that's what we call being recessive. So this guy right here would have a little letter T. Now let me go ahead and explain this in a little bit more detail. If you recall we have to have Mother Nature's made it very clear we have to have two copies of every one of our uh, genes. 
And so if you take a look, this guy here, this tall one, we know has at least one big T. And this one here has to have at least one little T. Now, if we recall our uh, dominance rules, uh, it, we can have this tree be big T, little T, but yet it will still be tall because this big T will mask that little one. It's also possible for this tree to be big T, big T. So in that case, we have both copies of the big T. Now, the only way this little tree will be little is if we have two little T's. And so that's the basis of how we kind of assign letters to genetics. Now, um, you may have noticed that you can have the different. You can have a difference here. You can have big T, big T, or big T, little T, and at both of those things will will create a tall tree. So we, in science, make it a little bit more specific. If a organism is say big T, big T, we call that being pure dominant, or more specifically, being homozygous dominant. Homo is a, uh, it's a, it's a Latin word which means same. So each one of these alleles here is the same, thus making it homozygous dominant. If that little tree there is little t, little t, we call that being pure recessive or homozygous recessive. Now, what's kind of interesting is that if we have one of each, so if we have big t, little t, we call that being heterozygous. And really, ultimately, there is only one way to be heterozygous, having one of each. Um, so hetero is a Latin word which means other. Thus, each one of those is different. So uh, that's where we get the term heterozygous. Anyway, guys, that concludes an introduction to how we assign genetic crosses and start to build genetic crossing problems. And this is Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off, folks. Y'all have a nice day.